we're just gonna get things going here tweet went out we're live on YouTube I'm ahead of schedule uh, I think the last couple of weeks I've been a little bit behind although I did a Thursday stream last week So I say hi in the chats, make sure all our chats are going. Get the windows in the right spot. Very nice. Hello, Alvaro. Hi, Bruce. Thanks for saying hi. Paul, thank you on YouTube. Alvaro on YouTube. MD Roberts, thank you. Very colorful. Oh yeah, I can go back to back to this. Picarina Hurry, thank you for Discord. Good morning, Unexpected Maker. Good morning, Dave. Or hi, David. <laughs> I don't know if it's morning for you. I uh, haven't seen anything on the Twitch chat yet. I think it's open. I think I am on low latency on YouTube, which is good. We're going to get started in just a minute or two. Just one ping. <laughs> I can't type in Sean Connery Russian accent. How are we doing on the other, uh, I know YouTube's going, it says Periscope is going, doesn't show anybody watching Twitch, but we should be on LinkedIn as well. Twitch going, thank you, David. Awesome. Hmm. New York Times is pinging me with stuff okay uh let me put my phone a little way uh cash at me no thank you twitch loves to play a super loud ad don't all ads like to be loud hi jim okay let me pull up my notes and let's do housekeeping so he hello everyone my name is scott and i work on circuit python for adafruit adafruit is an open source open hardware uh company based out of new york uh we're going to talk about what we're doing today uh in just a bit um but yeah i'm paid by adafruit to work on this stuff please support them um, you can go to adafruit.com and buy lots of really cool open source hardware that you can use to build all sorts of things. You can go to learn.adafruit.com to get lots of ideas. Uh, if you'd like to join our chat that happens all week, every week, uh, we have a chat server called uh, the Discord. Discord is a, a chat app and we have a, an Adafruit Discord. Uh, you can do that by going to adafru.it slash Discord. Um, on here, the, the gray box, that's definitely not that direction, but this direction. Uh, is the one coming from the Discord chat. The other box is the YouTube chat. Um, we usually have lots of folks in the YouTube chat as well. Um, so yeah, support me. Uh, I stream regularly on Fridays at 2 p.m. Pacific. Uh, I live in Seattle, so uh, Pacific time zone is the one that I am aware of. Uh, it, we typically go for at least two hours, depending on how we're doing and what we're doing. Uh, we might run over. Um, <laughs> you pointed the right direction to my gray box perfect um so yeah uh 2 p.m pacific on fridays typically goes two hours uh if you have questions uh feel free to ask um i will answer them as they come up uh one note uh next week is going to be on thursday uh you know that like my secondary time if i can't do fridays is thursdays after john park's workshop workshop at 2 p.m pacific so next week will be another Thursday day. Um, they have two cats. Uh, the one in the corner here, that's Spook. 
uh, he he and his sister are two cats. Uh, Spook is epileptic, which means he has seizures from time to time. So uh, it has happened during the stream. If he starts hissing, I'll just mute and and take a look uh, and keep an eye on him while he does it. He's usually he's always been fine, uh, but I want to make sure he doesn't get caught up in cords or anything. Um, the other cat, Vin, his sister has some teeth problems. So uh, next Friday is her dental appointment where they're putting her under and taking some teeth, at least one tooth or half a tooth out um, and cleaning the rest of them as well. So uh, that's why next week is on Thursday, not Friday, is that I just don't want to have to be on stream while I'm worried about the cat. Um, anyway, so that's the cat details. That's housekeeping. I think I got everything. Again, join Discord at adafru.it slash Discord. Uh, support Adafruit, support myself through adafruit.com. Um, starting with questions, uh, we have a question from P. Curry in a hurry that says, are you able to breathe out there again? Um, yes. Although we did actually have, so we, we had very thick wildfire sp smoke like two weeks ago now, um, where it was like really, really bad. Um, I actually, I showed this on show and tell. I don't know if I showed it here. Um, let me switch the camera mode. So I had made this, um, actually I can even plug it in. We can check. So this is a, a particle or a particulate sensor and there's just a feather wing here. I have a battery, so let me plug it in. Um, I was measuring, I was measuring the approximate PM 2.5, which is like a measure of particle size, uh, which is supposedly pretty bad for you. And, uh, a couple weeks ago, outside I measured it about 150 or even two, over 200. Um, and then when that went away after we got some storms and some rain, it was measuring like under five, mostly zero. Um, but we actually did get some fire smoke or get some smoke in here uh, within the last like few days, but it's been mostly up above, not at the ground level. So I do have the window open because I'm worried it's going to get hot in here. So you can see that it's uh, reading there about in the teens. Oops, sorry. So you, you can see the PM 2.5 uh, reading there. And it's approximated because it's actually measuring particle size, not particle weight, like the actual measurement is. Um, so yeah, it's not great. It's it's like moderate to like, I, I went for run, even though it's a little bit worse than, than it could be. Um, and I have the window open because I want to stay cool. Uh, but for comparison, when, when it was like 150 to 200 outside, it was actually still like 60 to 20 to 60 inside when that was the case. So that's why I'm like, okay, with the window being open. So yeah, it's not too bad. Bruce says we're at 74 here, which is not great. They claim moderate. Yeah. Yeah. I think the airnow.gov says... Yes, DCDS, does Adafruit carry the particle counter? They do, but they're all out of stock right now because everybody wants them because of the smoke. So I actually picked this up a few years ago. Um, but if you just look for PM 2.5, it's this, this sensor here. And then there's actually a newer version that does I squared C. The original, the version I'm using is, um, oh, you can't see, sorry. Um, Yeah, so this is what I have here is this um, air quality sensor. And then we have a new version of it that is actually like I squared C, which is even nicer than the one I've got. I've got the one we had a few years ago. Um, yeah, it's kind of hard to compare the output of this sensor to the output on the like government site because there's like more processing that they do because there is like an approximation. Um, but yeah, this is the, the sensor that like most of the things I've seen are purple air, purple air sensors. And they actually have like the sensors that are in these purple airs are the same sensors. They just got like more pro post-processing to it. Uh, that, so basically they, they better calibrated it. But for me, because I've been using this setup for the last few weeks, like at least I have a like rough comparison. So yeah, that's the first question of the day. Uh, let's t just go over, um, yeah, yeah, the purple air sensor actually has two. 
as well. So they're definitely like trying to be more accurate. Which you clearly bought from Adafruit in April 2019. Exactly. <laughs> That's how I know if I have something. Is if if it shows here. So like if I'm like, oh, do I have that sensor? I go on the site and see if it says I already bought it. Um, even before I try to dig around because I have a lot of stuff. I have a lot of sensors and things. Yeah, I I thought about capturing it in Adafruit IO, but I just uh like the bridge, I have a, a Raspberry Pi bridge behind me that can do like uh like I set up the broadcast net stuff for. Um but I just didn't get around to it. All right. Uh, so let's talk about we're gonna what we're gonna do today. Um, here's the notes doc. If you're on Discord, I did post a link there. So uh, I guess I should have I should add a topic here. Particle sensing slash air quality. Maybe I need a meta point. <laughs> I love when things arrive and I have no idea what they are. Yeah. Um, okay, so I will just put a time code here. So here's the topics I had in mind today. Um, so we already talked about particle sensing. Um, I want to just talk about a fix I did f for the upcoming Metro ESP32 S2. Um, I released beta one. And uh, so, yeah, please try it out. Um, I've been working on the IMX flash as a break from the ESP32 S2, so you'll you may see that, um, and I can we can talk about that a bit later. Uh, Mark uh, MD Roberts 1243 asked me to, I said I said like oh this is a common um, problem where people commit the wrong sub module, and so I wanted to just show why I think that happens a lot, um, and then I, the main thing I want to do today is actually check my email. Which I think was funny, but I mentioned it to a couple of people earlier this week, and they're like, oh, that would be very interesting. Um, so my goal with that is to talk about, like, to show my side of, like, if you have, um, if you made PRs or anything like that, and, and explain, like, what happens on my end and how I deal with that, and hopefully give some people ideas on how to handle lots of email, and then also um, showing code review stuff. So basically what I did is I, I did it yesterday, but I did not actually do it today. Uh, all I did today was go through the like internal stuff um, to try to make sure that there nothing shows up on the stream that is sensitive. But um, <laughs> compare git submodule and git subtree. I don't know the difference. So uh, yeah, I couldn't tell you. But let's, uh, okay, let's knock these off. Um, so let me just pull up the pull. Let me take a time code. I just wanted to show this digital. So we, Lamore is working on a Metro ESP32 S2. Metro is a form factor that we really like uh, because let me show. It's the it's the Arduino Uno form factor. Oh, I guess I I guess I I don't want to show that. Uh, where else do I have a Metro? Oh, here we go. So this is what a Metro looks like. Um, it's an Arduino form factor. And these are the best form factor, I think, for starting out with a new chipset. Um, as Pete Curry in a hurry says, there's lots of shields for that form factor, but also um, they're large enough to fit a debug header, uh, which when you're first getting things started and you're doing debugging is really, really helpful. Um, in addition to that, it has a, a power input, which allows you to run it and debug it without having USB native. So Metros are a great first uh, board design for a new chipset just because it's really easy to handle. Um, let me switch my eye tracking back on. And yeah, P. Karina says though, Feather appears to also be winning. Yeah, Feathers are great. Feather Feathers are great once you've gotten kind of a, like your platform up and you want to test breadth. Right, because there's just so many feather wings, uh, but really getting like reliable like core functionality is is better on a metro. Um, 
Although we've had some feathers that also have uh, SWD like debug headers on them as well. So I just wanted to show um, the pull request I did. So um, if you don't realize it, Lamore is really good at testing. I don't people. I don't think she really shows it, but uh, she's working on this ESP thirty two S two Metro, and she literally tests every pin. Um, how many people can say that they've actually tested literally every pin? I certainly don't. Like, I'm actually quite bad at um, manual testing stuff. So uh, if you wonder why Adafruit has such great products and support and stuff, it's because, like, Lamore does the work. Like, Lady Ada does the work. Um, and so what she found was that um, with the Metro ESP32 S2, she was trying to put the, the D13 LED on GPIO 42, and she was trying to just blink it from CircuitPython, and it wasn't working. And so the problem was is that um, the GPIO stuff that we test, that we've tested in the past, is uh, pins that are default to GPIO. So oh, let me pull up the ESP32 S2 datasheet. So there's two do main documents that you probably want to look at. Um, one is the data sheet and one is the technical reference. Um, generally, the reference manual is better because uh, it has a lot more detail on the uh, individual peripherals. But the S2 has this table at the very end in the appendix called the IO MUX. And it's super helpful. Um, yeah, Mark Olson points out debug edged IO. Yeah, we'll get there. Um, metros are great too. Uh, so. If you look in this column, I know it's still kind of small. I can make it even bigger. So here's the pins, the pin number, and then uh, there's on the output there's this like mux that changes what the functionality of the pin is, and the default is function zero. So you can see here that like lots of pins default to GPIO, but as you go up higher, they don't. And particularly what we were trying to do is. Uh, do GPIO 42, so like reuse a JTAG pin um, for the LED because like metros have a lot of pins out and so you you really have to like potentially share. Um, so for that case, the JTAG defaults to not GPIO, which meant it didn't actually work uh, when she tried it. So what I had to do is I had to add um, the ability or I actually added GPIO config so this, uh, what this does is it switches from default digital function zero to digital function one, which is GPIO. Um, got that, and then I also fixed this bug about reading back the output value. Um, some, some HALs allow you to just read what value is being output, which I could probably figure out this way in the lowest level to figure out like the output bit. The other way it can work is if your input buffer is on. Um, you can just literally read the value that's being output by the, like, the, the output. Um, <laughs> uh, but uh, instead of that, I just save the value and return it back. Uh, it's, it's simpler that way. So any questions about that? That's a bug fix that should be handy. Um, moving on. That bug fix is part of um, beta 1. So if you haven't checked it out, you can go to circuitpython.org slash downloads and you can get beta one. So you just click a board and uh, this is the stable release, which is 531, which is quite getting kind of old. Uh, but then there's beta one, which you can download and test out. So um, please, please try it out. Um, I know Unexpected Maker found an issue uh, that we'll have to take a look at at some point before we go stable. Um, thank you, Unexpected Maker, for that. Um, and yeah, I just want to plug that, um, did it yesterday, did all the release notes and stuff. Uh, we can see the release notes by going to GitHub, Adafruit, CircuitPython. And then it's a little weird, uh, on the right, it doesn't show pre-releases, um, the unstable releases, but if you click releases there, you can get to 6.0 beta 1, and you can see everything that changed. Um, I was actually quite, uh... I was quite impressed that this basically has only 10 days worth of changes 
and yet we had like a whole number of um, contributors. So these are all the people that I found who made a pull request or commented on an issue that a pull request was related to. Um, I just kind of did it manually, uh, but like in 10 days, that's all the folks that worked on CircuitPython core, um, which is really awesome. And we have no known issues because the one known issue with SD cards and on disk bitmaps was fixed by Foamy Guy. So we're actually getting closer to being uh, release ready. So now's the time to really, uh, you know, find the showstoppers. There will always be bugs, but find the showstoppers and uh, we'll get to release candidate because uh, I want to get stable out real real soon here because 531 is old, right? Like the more you find yourself recommending like using the pre-release, the beta, the more you should really probably just call it stable and get everyone over there. So please give the beta a try and uh, find find the things that are that we need to fix. You'll find other things that we don't absolutely need to fix. Um, and I guess I should say the highlight of beta one is also kind of like the can IO interface. So if you've ever done can, please try that as well. Um, yeah, and if you if you try beta one and don't find issues, then that's a good sign as well. Okay, um, that's that. Let's see what else is on the list. Um, so I've been working on, on the IMX RT series just a bit um, as a break. So if you see the you'll see that like my branches there um, and stuff, but I, uh, hi Johnny. Yes, we can. The can jokes are unending. Okay. Let's talk about this common mistake, um, that I see pretty often. And I want to talk about why I think it happens. So the issue that I see people, so here's my terminal. And oh, look at that. I actually, I went to commit what I was doing so I could switch away from it. And uh, pre-commit actually caught a trailing, trailing white space problem. So if you've not used pre-commit, this is a good, this is a good uh, tutorial on that as well. So you, you may find that the CI fails um, complaining about the pre-commit. Do you want to go up? I think he was watching the birds fly around. Spooks up. I don't know if you can see he's... Yeah, there he is. He's awake. Um, <laughs> cat can. So yeah, pre-commit, we run it in the CI. So you, you may see a build fail because of it. And it's really, really, really nitpicky about like... Python formatting and line endings and trailing white space. It's kind of uh, not super fun, um, but it's actually really easy to install locally. And if you do it locally, it runs it before you or like when you do a commit and then will fail if you have any of those problems. Not only does it fail, um, but it does actually fix it. So you can see here that uh, there's a if I do git diff, it will show that like it looks like nothing changed, but if you like highlight it, you can see that there's like, like this trailing space after this comma that got deleted. Um, so what you would do is you just say git add again, and I'm going to run git status just to make sure that I have everything I want, and then I can just up arrow until I commit again, and it will run pre commit. It should pass, and now it's committed. Um, no screen time. I'm sorry. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so here's what I did is I uh, I did get status. I like one uh, one file was changed just by uh, I thought I had switched it over, but not. Uh, thank you. Sorry, folks. Uh, so yeah, when pre commit failed, uh, it automatically fixes the file, but you still have to add it. So here's the git diff I was talking about. If I highlight it. You can see that um, one line is like one character longer than the other one. Um, so it, it automatically fixed it. All I have to do now is I git add dot, make sure that uh, my status is what I expect. And then when I commit again, bye Johnny. Uh, when I commit again, it passes pre-commit and, and does the commit. So 
Um, I know it's uh, kind of annoying when it when it fails in the CI, but it's really easy to install. And I think it's just precommit.com. Yeah, so if you do precommit.com uh, and just follow these install instructions, which are pretty straightforward, um, then it will automatically run for you and be be really easy and you won't have to deal with it. So I recommend that, that's pre-commit. Um, let's take another time code. Okay, so let's talk about submodules. So submodules are um, basically Git repositories within a Git repository. So it's a way to link one to the other. Um, one common one is, uh, well, you can see all the ones that are, are here by doing git submodule list, or not, <laughs> uh, status, there we go. So these are all the submodules that are in uh, CircuitPython. And one thing that's nice about uh, submodules is that you can say what specific commit within that other repository you want to include. Um, so if we look here, we can see that lib tiny USB is this commit 8b2. And we can compare that if we go to our, we pull up the repository on GitHub, we can go to lib, and we can see here that all of the ones that are at something, those are the, our submodules. And we can see here that tiny USB is at 8b2. Um, so we know that the current state of my uh, of my branch is is that. Now, if I, I I'm going to do something weird. I think if I just git checkout head minus 40. So this is like moving back 40 commits. Let's see what that does. Okay, so here's what happened. This is meant to simulate like if you're doing a merge and things have changed. Um, this is what you're gonna see is that when you do it, you can see M for live tiny USB and also the Spresence SDK. Uh, ignore this detached head stuff, that doesn't really matter. So now if we do git status, I did a checkout but now I have two things that were modified and they say that there was new commits. Now, this is not a great, uh, this is not a great error message because you didn't modify it. What you did is that when it checks something else out, it didn't actually update it. Like it didn't change the, the commits for the submodules. So I think if we, um, Let's just try that again. There's also switch, and I think switch is more modern. If we do git switch head 40. So you, now you see we're on IMX Metro again, and it's and it's okay. So if we do git switch, it didn't work. It doesn't let you do the head thing. Um, hmm. All right, well, we'll use checkout. I don't know how switch, if switch works or not. Um, Hikari Nehuri says, it's really important to know you're in a detached head state, but it's not what you're immediately talking about. Yeah, so what detached head state means is that um, the commit you're on is not associated with a, uh, a branch, right? I think that's right. Um, which means that if you just added more commits to that, like the only way you'd be able to get back to that commit is by knowing the actual commit uh, hash. Um, usually you use a branch as a, like, a user-friendly name to identify a commit. Um, so what do you do if you're in this case? Remember, git status, always, 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 always. If you're asking me for help uh, on git, the first thing you should do is do git status. You can see we have these two modifieds. Now the question is, how do I get them up to date or, or in sync with what I want? So I think, well, what you do is you do git submodule uh, you might need to do sync. You can do git submodule sync. And what this is doing is it's figuring out, um, yeah, Quirky's pointing out there's ref log to find lost commits. Um, but yeah, yeah. If you have a commit, all is not lost. It's just harder to do. Um, 
So git stubmodule module sync is going to keep track, make sure that your the repository you're looking at to get a commit is the same as the one that the like checked in version looks for. And that's what git modules is. If we just look at git modules, this has like if we were looking for a tiny USB, um, we it has a URL to where that um, where that uh, repository is like downloaded from. Um, so sync will make sure that uh, that that's the same. Um, Santigo, uh, this is not Python. We're talking about Git, and uh, we probably won't. We'll probably, we may look at some Python code today, but we probably won't actually code that much. Um, after this, we're gonna go through email and do pull requests and support and code reviews and stuff. Okay, so the other step we do now that we've synced it is git submodule update. And I like to also give it the init. So if a new submodule is added, it needs to be initted. Um, so you do that and you can see that for these two paths that were different, it checked out two different things. It's still red, which is weird to me. Um, okay, so if we go to git status, this is great actually. And it still says that something is up with live tiny USB. And if we, you can just change to live tiny USB. And so now we're within the su like the sub git repository. You can see that like our, our commit number has changed or git hash. Uh, we could do git status again. And now it shows a very similar message, but for a sub module of live tiny USB. Um, so we can do the same thing within tiny USB. It turns green. We can do git status as always, and it says uh, head is still detached, but everything else looks good. And we can back out of live tiny USB, and we're green here as well, at the top level of Circuit Python. Um, so now our our current kind of local state is all in sync with what it should be for this commit, um, and that means it's a good foundation. Like if we wanted to start a uh, a new branch. Um, we could do that. Actually, let me just start a new branch just because um, I just started my computer, so I have to do SSH add. So let me just uh, switch to Adafruit main. Let's just do it a little bit again. Head is still detached. I don't know why. When does switch work? So now we're doing the same thing, but we've moved forward in time. And so we're going to do the same thing again. Update init. We're still messed up because of the live tiny USB thing. But now I can actually just do it from here and say, mm, that didn't work. So I actually have to go into it. We could do recursive, but uh, I try not to do recursive because you may not actually need a sub module. Um, okay, so now we're at Adafruit main. It's showing us the tag because we haven't merged anything since. Uh... Ah, you'll have to say detach with switch, I think. I see. So now if I want to create a new branch, I, I could call it, I don't know, hello world. Whatever you're working on. Never do recursive with CircuitPython. Yeah. You can, build, you can bring in really large repositories. Okay, so you may say, like, Scott, I don't understand how this ends up with PRs that have submodule changes in them. And what I wanted to imagine that you're you're in this state here where live tiny USB or uh, this state here where something is modified. If you do git add so that this red becomes green, that means that your next commit will include that change of the submodule back to the old version, right? Because, like... The reason it's a problem is that it's on the older version. Um, <laughs> oh, recursive submodules breaks tiny USB. I think tiny USB itself brings in the ESP IDF, so that might be part of the reason. Um, so yeah, if you're in the state where your git status is showing a, a submodule is modified, you add it to your commit and then commit, you're going to move, you're going to mess things up uh, for the for this sub module. So 
I think I showed you what is important, which is like, okay, how do you get yourself out of that state where you're, you're out of sync? All right, any other questions about that? Cool. Okay. Let's move on to the exciting part. Checking email. How do I take a time code? Okay, so um, one of the goals that I have for this stream is is demonstrating kind of like all the different pieces of things that I do day to day. Um, and I would be remiss, I, I would be lying to you if I didn't say that email was a large part of what I do. Now, it's kind of, it's a bit unfair to just call it email, right? Because I'm actually doing, uh, there's a lot of tasks that come out of doing that email. But I use email kind of as a like a tr task tracking sort of thing. Um, so let me close some of these tabs. It got me thinking about the, the reason I wanted to show this and the reason I wanted to, to do it is um, I read this book called Working in Public. It's this book here. Um, it, it, it's called, it says Working in Public, the Making and Maintenance of Open Source Software. Just came out this year. Um, if you're related to stuff uh, related to open source work, this is really interesting. And there's been some discussion around Hacktoberfest within this context as well. Um, but the main point of the book, maybe it's spoilers, is that open source software itself is not something you can sell and make money off because uh, like, there's two foundations for, the, for economics. I don't know. I'm not, I, read the book. I, I'm not going to explain it that well, but the idea is that like things that things are valuable either because like as people use them that they, they degrade over time. So like a forest, like you can't take all the trees because there are not infinite trees. Or, um, what is it? Or a, like exclusivity or something. But the the gist is that like open source is principally like doesn't have those problems. Infinite many people can use the software. Uh, without degrading the experience of anyone else uh, who's using it. Um, and so what this book does is they, they kind of reframe it and the, the thing that you're paying for with open source is actually the people who create it, creates its time, right? So uh, there's only so much attention that uh, any given person who's creating open source software can uh, muster, can use. And I'm sure a lot of you have felt this in your jobs as well. Of Like, I only have so many hours in the day. How do I... Um, prioritize what I'm doing? How do I handle, especially in open source, how do you handle like lots and lots of people engaging with you um, and still kind of squirreling away some time to like do the coding stuff? Um, so this is the kind of the context for like why I, I want to show like how I handle that. If you've interacted with me before, uh, you've so we have a meeting on Mondays, which is like uh, an overview of CircuitPython and what everyone else is doing. Um, and I always say there, or I try to say there, like if you are waiting for me more than 24 hours, not including weekends, but during the work week, um, you have the right or you should ping me because I probably missed it. And the reason that I probably missed it is that the way that I keep track of what I need to do, I try to do it every morning. Um, so, and my email is like the central location that like all those tasks stem from. So like if you're on a pull request and you're replying to me, I should get an email that says you replied to me. That's in my email as unread. So that's kind of the metric that I have. Um, so I wanted to show how I do that off. It's something that I also kind of developed when I was at Google. So like I, I worked for Google from 2009 to 2015 and like l really learned the ins and outs of like all you know gmail and and google calendar and all that so i want to show my process for kind of like managing all of the email incoming and how i try to get like a broad scope of what's what's happening within like the larger circuit python ecosystem um so yeah that starts in my email inbox hopefully i won't show anything i think i checked it uh, Adafruit's very open source. Uh, this is my open source. This is my Adafruit email. It is not my personal email. Um, 
but yeah, let's go to that. Um, if you're interested about working in public, I put this in the notes doc as well. Um, so here's my email. Um, this is my inbox. So uh, I track things by unread counts. Um, you can see I'm, I'm on some Zephyr mailing lists and I got one new of that, but I won't check it. Um, I have a subscription to... So basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through all my email and I'm going to open a bunch of tabs up. <laughs> um, and the reason I do that is that I actually want to minimize the amount of time I'm in my, in my inbox so that I can get all those counts, those unread counts down to zero and then basically ignore my email for the rest of the day and then go through all the tabs. Um, so that's my process. Uh, so for example, here I have two from the forum that says like, hey, you need to look at the forum. So I'm just gonna middle click and open it up here. I have the forum and I'm logged in and I can see all of the, all of the forum posts that I haven't responded to yet. So we'll get to that, but first we wanna get through all the email um, so I'll hit Y, which is archive, um, and that's that will take me to the same thing. So I thought this was interesting uh, because I'm a member of the Adafruit organization. I get like by default all of the different repos, Adafruit repos. I get mail about. Um, so the question is, is like, what do I do? So uh, my goal is to keep um, my inbox stuff that's specifically to me uh, but it also obviously includes some of these like random random uh, like newsletters and things um, but what I do is I'll click here and if you go to the more menu <laughs> Bruce is pointing out that he has lots of unread emails yeah this is my process I like to get it down to zero uh, so if you have an email here, so this is from the a repository for the Pi Portal PCB, and I don't care about this. It's very unrelated to what, like my core task, uh, but I do kind of like to see it go by. Um, you could see that the issue was opened. Lamore replied to it and already closed it. Um, and so what you can do is in inbox, I guess this is inbox is dead. Right, this is Gmail that was incorporated inbox stuff. Uh, but what you could do is you could say filter messages like this, which will give you this like advanced search, which has a, has the words list. So this is all, all the emails from this repository. Uh, you can say search to see them, but you actually wanna hit create filter here. You hit create filter. And what I do is I do skip the inbox. And also I should point out that if something hits my inbox, it notifies me on my phone. Right, so that's one of the reasons I want as much as I can to skip my inbox so that it doesn't ping me when I get it. Um, I'll see it when I sit down to do email in the morning. So skip the inbox, apply the label, and I've got this other GitHub label, which is basically like all the GitHub email that I don't really care about. Um, and then I apply a filter to one matching conversation. So that's the one that I just got. Um, so I'll hit create filter. And it takes a little while uh, for, I have a lot of filters, maybe that's why. I basically have one filter per repository. Um, so yeah, let me talk about what these are. So that was other GitHub. So other GitHub is like PCB repositories, Arduino repositories that I get just because they're on the Adafruit org. Um, mentions so if you are mentioned either directly or indirectly so like circuit python librarians will count as a mention um it will i have a, a filter that will add me the mention label as well now that's the weird thing about gmail is that these are not folders they are labels which means that emails can have more than one uh, so there is a little bit of a like a process for me to like go from like uh, I do other GitHub because it's like the stuff I can do quickest and I really don't have anything to do with it. And then I go the opposite. I do all the mentions, which are the ones that I probably have to look at the most because they're related to me. And then uh, the CircuitPython label I have here is anything, any repository CircuitPython related. So that, uh, no, that's not true. CircuitPython label is all the CircuitPython core messages. 
And then the GitHub one here is uh, broader. It includes all of the CircuitPython libraries. So the order that I'm going to go in is other GitHub mentions CircuitPython and then regular GitHub. And actually, as Unexpected Maker is pointing out, I do a kind of a similar process for Discord. Um, I did it today because I was going to have to be in the chat. But basically, like, I pile up all the mentions of me. I had, like, five one morning in the last few mornings. Um, and so I go through all the... I, I do kind of do inbox zero for all of the uh, channels in Discord as well, where the CircuitPython one is the one that I keep track of the most. Um, so, yeah, let's go through this, and then we'll we'll get lots of tabs, and we'll go through them. I know it's thrilling but it can take a couple hours and i felt a little weird this morning not doing it so i'll click the label and then i add uh, is unread so here we see this is a python shell which i don't know what it is and lamore merged something so it's fine we have a learning system guide which i don't usually do and lamore merged it as well um, this is a release, the Raspberry Pi installer, I think one of the reasons that I like to just look at these broad ones is just make sure things got replied to and make sure everybody's being nice, um, cause I still can do moderation if need be, um, but Lamore has a, some process where she gets to a lot of this stuff as well, um. So I'm just hitting K uh, as a way to like go to the next email message, which also, because I'm looking at it, it's marked as red. So you can see the number here is almost down. Like I'm almost through it. Uh, other GitHub is the quickest, quickest to go through. And uh, that means that, and it's like, it's the quickest to go through and the chances of me needing to respond to it are pretty low. Um, so, so it's pretty quick. Now, okay, let's go to mentions. Oh. This is kind of funny, too. So, um, I said that I, you can see I just got an email and I got pinged on my watch and on my phone. And it's uh, the forum because somebody else, so I, I watched the whole forum. So anytime any post happens since I visited the forum and last, uh, causes me to get an email again. So because I have it pulled up in a tab and somebody posts, now I get it again. So here is uh, the mentions. And this is the one that I want to kind of take a look at closest uh, because it's actually like something that I probably responded to um, or it's me. You can see here that like it might be me as well. So uh, I'm going to just do the is in red and start at the bottom. This is ad licensing info. Uh, I'm here because the review was requested from the CircuitPython librarians, which I'm one of. And we can see here that it was already merged into master. So I'm just going to hit K and move on. There's nothing else that I need to do. Um, this is something I already saw. Like on some pull request, we mentioned to the wrong person. <laughs> Uh, and they replied with an empty email. Uh, and it's already been merged, so I'm just going to go through that again. Hmm. So this is me saying, Melissa, what do you think of this? She says, I think it's good that we have it in here. And approved it, but there's also no email for merging it. So I'm going to hit this dots, and I'm going to say view on GitHub, and middle click that opened up a tab here, and we'll get to it in a bit. Anecdata says, my process is for each new email, I either act immediately, archive trash, or put it into one of a very small number of action folders for later. So inbox is usually zero. Yeah, I guess the, the reason I have this process is that my in it, something hitting my inbox pings me on my phone, and I want to minimize the amount of things that do that. Okay, let's keep going. So we've queued this up in our in our browser window. So we've got two tasks here. Uh, let's keep going. 
We've got 12 more mentions to look at. Um, this is deep sleep support on CircuitPython. Just there to demonstrate the function call. Uh, I don't think there's anything else I had to say about this. Microdev and I had a discussion last or yesterday about this, so I don't think I don't think I need to reply. So I'm just going to hit K. Uh, CircuitPython register. Okay, so this is addressed to me with a big long explanation, <laughs> and also somebody else. So I want to get back to Sedacious about this, so I'm going to open that up as well. Here's a review. So Higher Effect requested your review on adding analog in. Unexpected Maker said, I'm excited about this. <laughs> um, and then Anic Data followed up on it as well. So one of the reasons I'm able to do this is like open source is great because these are conversations that, you know, some of you participated in. Anybody can watch. It's all public, which is great. Um, so I did this, I hit the view on GitHub, it's up in my tab here. So I'll take a look closer at that. I think that's actually going to do like a first pass code review. So we'll get that in a bit. Um, so, so don't bother re-reviewing more changes forthcoming, but they're not ready yet. So this is on the set next code file PR. And again, the reviewer or the, the author said sp specifically like hold off on, on taking another look. So I'll do that. And hopefully they'll email me. Otherwise it won't hit my inbox again. Um, so here's the same person on the issue, not the PR asking, uh, asking some questions to think further ahead about stuff, which is awesome. Like, uh, one of the things we want to do in CircuitPython is they add the ability to, uh, change the USB descriptor and boot.py so that you can actually boot up and be something else. Um, so they're asking more detailed questions about that, which I want to get back to. So I'm going to open it up and hit K for the next thing. Um, this is between higher effect and TAC. Uh, da -da -da -da. Files just fine, but no USB. I kind of want to take a look at this to see if I can't contribute, but I pro I may not actually reply at all. So I'm just going to open that too. Add support for RGB matrix featherwing to matrix portal. This is another circuit Python librarians. And we can see that Lady Ada took a look at this and reviewed it and approved it and merged it. So um, if it's something where I think like, oh, maybe like that's not the way we want to do it, I will jump in, but I think that's fine. Here's circuitpython.org updates and nobody's replied to it. It was to CircuitPython library. And so I'll take a look at that as well. Update open MVH7 picks and those have been approved and merged. So I don't need to do anything with that. Here's another update that's approved and merged. Uh, display IO fix matrix portal. <laughs> Mark. Mark, I, I thought somebody might try to do that. Mark just sent me an email. Um, yeah, maybe this is a time to say that like B I, it's fine because I'm streaming it, but like generally don't send me personal emails. Do not DM me if you need support with stuff. And that goes back to the fact that like I probably know the answer, but there's also other people that do as well. So doing it in a public setting like CircuitPython Discord channel is much better for me personally because and, and you because you'll probably get a faster answer from somebody else. Right. So it's good for me that I probably won't have to respond to you and good for you because you'll get it sooner. Um, if you don't like DMing me about technical questions is like imposing on me because you know, I know the answer and I probably know the answer, but like there's, <laughs> there's nobody else or like if you DM me only, there's nobody else that can help out. Um, and, and so you're like requiring me to respond to you versus like sending it publicly out. Um, <laughs> 
unexpected maker is saying you're talking to me right now, Scott. Uh, I mean, if I feel that's the case, I am very, I try to be kind and just be like, let's talk in CircuitPython. Um, so I'm, I'm try to be pretty good about it. I don't want to discourage people from DMing me broadly because I think there is a place for like private discussion about upcoming products and private discussion about interpersonal things. Like there is a, there is a reason that DMs should be open. Um, like moderation issues uh, on Discord as well. Um, but uh, if you're asking me a technical question, it doesn't belong in a DM, right? Like there's nothing fundamentally private about that. DMs should be for private discussions only. Um, and Anecdata also points out uh, public, also, public interactions like this ha also have the advantage that others can learn, right? So even, and what I'll tell people is like, don't DM me. It, about a technical question, you're totally okay to mention me in a public space, right? Like, if you mention me, and then somebody else replies, and you get your answer, great, and I'll see that. Um, and, but if if that's not the case, if somebody doesn't know the answer, you mention me, I get to it in my, like, morning pass or whatever, and I reply to you, then at least people can still see what's happening, or, or see what the fix was. Um <laughs> Mark says I wanted to email earlier but didn't have my email on this computer. Yeah. <laughs> so this is why I'm not on my inbox right now, but I'll, I'll I think my inbox is safe. Mark said uh, potentially embarrassing email subject on your live stream. Good. It was a great segue to like when to DM me and when not to DM me. Um, and actually I'll just get rid of this too. Cause I have it open. I have it queued up. Okay. So we're going back to mentions. Uh, this, I didn't queue up yet. So I actually need to do that. I'm actually trying to get this done today too. Like I'm, I need to go through my email like, cause it's the weekend. Right. So this is the last time I do this this week. Um, and then I won't do it till Monday. If I don't do it today, then I'll have to do it on Monday. Um, oh, yeah. Sorry, Mark. <laughs> Your email is public. I didn't show it that long. Uh, that's what you get for emailing me when I'm um, on a stream. I know my email is obvious, too. I was pretty happy about that, though. Okay, so unhide Feather S2 at unexpected maker's request. And it's uh, CircuitPython librarians and uh, hasn't been responded to. So I'll open that. Um, should be pretty quick, right? Uh, more circuitpython.org stuff. Do, do, do. And this is like the context for that too. Um, so we're queued up. That's great. Um, I can see John Park and Melissa going back and forth and it's merged. I, I went out of order. Uh, okay, let's keep going. So now we're in CircuitPython. So this is um, this is all of the CircuitPython core stuff. So this is probably still relevant to me um, and things that I should respond to. You can see that it's kind of Swiss cheese in terms of what's been read and unread. And that's partly because I've done all these mentioned ones already. And you can also see that a lot of them have the GitHub tag as well. So like this 41 number for GitHub will also go down as I do these. And that's the reason I do this first. Um, but because it's kind of Swiss cheese in terms of what's read and unread, I just do is unread again. And I start at the bottom. And you can see this is actually... Um, so there is a GitHub setting to get emails about your own actions. And I had to turn it on. So just double check that. Um, but I actually like that. I, because this process kind of tells me what I did last time, right? So it the first few of these should be actually quite easy to do because they're just me finishing stuff. So in the same way that I was looking earlier, like, okay, it was approved and it was merged, like, this is okay. So let's keep going. Again, closed, merged, closed, merged, comment. So this is me asking Jeff about something. And because there's no other emails in this thread, like he didn't get back to me. So I'm going to wait for him to get back to me. Like there's a question here. Um, 
So I'm just going to keep going. And again here, this is me getting back to Ryan. So I'll keep going. Here's me approving and merging. And then... E CI emails. So those are boring. Okay, so here's approve. Uh, fix up and merge. Approve and merge. Here's the release. So I'm just hitting K to go through these. Um, as I do that, here's the automated release update for the release, which I approved and merged. Here's CircuitPython stage. So this is a uh, PR to CircuitPython. Um, Christian approved it um, and tested it, which is super helpful. Um, but it's still unresolved. So I should hop in here and reply to them. So I'll queue that up. Uh, this is a an issue. I think, I think it's an issue that has a, is about the same thing of like we broke gamepad. I think. So I'll queue that up. Here's a can for STM thirty two F four five, and the reason I'm getting it is not a men like so. There's no mention because we already did our mentions, uh, but I do keep track of everything on the repo. So I will queue that up as well. Uh, there's not a whole lot of reviewers, so if nobody else has jumped in, then I'll, then I'll do it. Um, here's an awesome circuit Python thing that was approved and merged by Ian. Um, this might be so when sometimes it doesn't thread very well. So like this is still about the problems with the pew pew module or whatever. Um, so I'll just open that again. So there's chances that I'll have duplicate tabs, basically. But that's fine. Like, I'd rather have more things queued up than uh, not enough things. So here's a circuitpython.org that's been approved and merged. Sorry for the leaf blower or whatever it is. This is me asking, like, hey, what about this? Because I'm trying to whittle down issues for 6.0. Here's a hard crash. So I'm just going to take a look at that. I think that's what Jeff fixed as well. And I think that's what this is, but for because it's a separate email, I'll just open it. Um, this is me replying to Unexpected Maker about the double code.py running. So I'll take a look at that. Uh, yeah, so basically all these things that um, I might want to get back to. I'm just going to basically like if I want to see it in GitHub, I'll open it. So now you can see I have a lot of tabs. And this is why I'm grumpy sometimes in the morning when you like ping me, like once I just get on, because like I have all these tabs open as well. <laughs> just like, yeah. Okay, so GitHub, the GitHub label is actually much much smaller, which is great. Um, it went from 41 to 13 by going through that, so pretty tractable. Uh, let's just take a look here. Do, 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 do. Do, 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 verified fixed work fixed for me but it's not closed so let's j just open that as well make sure it gets closed uh, this is merged by Carter thank you Carter um, this is a reply f about Blinka and MicroPython but I don't need to do that this is just a new repository so I can skip that um, big long thing and it's meant Dan is mentioned in it so I'm just gonna let Dan deal with that that's kind of like the gist of this github thing it, like this github label is like I want to make sure that things don't go unanswered but I'm more willing to just let them sit so that somebody else can do it um, it's the circuit Python ones that I am like more focused on like okay I've gotta make sure that this gets done um, okay so same with that. Here's a friendly error message to cat and avoids zero subdivision. So this is actually probably um, this is probably in a uh, Hacktoberfest thing, actually. So that's the thing that you have to take in mind with October is that lots of people are incentivized to uh, make changes to stuff. Um, these seem like like 
reasonable questions that the person is answering. So I'm just going to take a look at that. Um, so this is on the ESP32 spy. Cannot import name parse headers. Oh, uh, so this is something I broke. <laughs> uh, so let's take a look at that. Um, I changed the request module. So by not being able to use parse headers, that's probably my fault. However, it's probably, uh, we'll get it. We'll, we'll get into it. My brain's like thinking about what I, how I'm responding to these things. All right. Here's something from Carter for motor kit and Lemore's looked at it and merged it. Here's a new release for that. Um, Here's a looks good and that's it. So we have this last one that came in. Um, syntax error in JSON when using Adafruit IO for fetching data. Uh, it came in one minute ago and I think I'll just leave it. All right, so that is my email. Um, I'm gonna take that back out of the tab because I might get other email that I don't want you to see. So let me take a time. Co I'll take a time code here bef uh, as we go through stuff. Um, on to reviewing An hour and six thirty nine. Any questions about that? I know that I, I'm i kind of surprised people were interested. It's one of those things that's like, could be kind of boring, but um, <laughs> yeah, Mark's saying, seriously, does Lamore ever sleep? Uh, I think so. But yeah, she does, a, she does an amazing amount of work. Does an amazing amount of work. And so if you ever hesitate to support Adafruit because you don't think that like Adafruit doesn't work really hard to to get your purchase like you're you're not paying attention if you think she doesn't do anything um and david says that's when chrome crashes actually i've had really good luck with firefox this is firefox but there's you can do like reopen a window and it opens all the all the tabs up again but i mean it's also not the end of the world like I have this rule of if I don't get back to you in 24 hours during the week, like you should ping me because I should have gotten back to you. Um, okay, let's work through our tabs. I, let's should we see how many? <laughs> Todd Bot says, "Wait, Scott, go back to that tab that had all your bank info." Um, I don't have that tab, but uh, the reverse of that is, uh, as you know, Todd Bot as one of my GitHub sponsors. Um, you can actually sponsor me, which this sponsor dashboard is not, not what I want to show, but I do have some GitHub sponsors and I am sponsoring MicroPython myself. So if you want to, if you want what, money coming into me, I, I won't let it go out, but, uh, this, you can sponsor me on GitHub if you do, if you do want to give some money. Um, but you can also buy from Adafruit and they pay me plenty to work on circuit python every day which is great um <laughs> p curry and hurry says she's amazing i generally want to give my money to adafruit because they'll do better things with it than i will yeah and i think um i think it's important to call out as well of like this process that i'm doing right now is like not directly adafruit work right like i'm not actively working on a device that Adafruit's going to sell. So the fact that they give me the space to both stream and both like help people through reviews and do that sort of like open source processy stuff, it's like really like kind of them because they could ask me to just spend all the time straight on um, devices. But, you know, Lamore and Phil understand that there's like this broader benefit that they get from an open source ecosystem, right? Like, if I'm helping somebody finding a bug or doing all that sort of thing, like they benefit from that too, along with other people. Um, 
<laughs> they give you money to talk to yourself in front of a computer. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. But, I mean, we've been getting lots of new contributors, which is great. And, like, making sure that they have a good experience is, like, beneficial for Adafruit as well. Like, uh, in particular, like, the deep sleep work that MicroDev has been starting, like, that's something we're interested in that we wouldn't have done right now, but maybe done in the future. But if somebody else can help us get that along, like, that's awesome. Okay, so let's count tabs first. We've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10... 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, and uh, 20 in a forum. So the forums takes a little while. And actually, let's do the forum first. I usually do the forum first. Um, although I took a time code as under reviewing. Um, I thought <laughs> my brain didn't match my click. The forum. Let's do the forum first. And the reason I do the form first is I'm generally doing this in the morning. So I'm actually trying to do all of the things that I have to have the least focus for first um, because I want to wake up more. <laughs> um, okay, so let's take a look at this. So uh, I'm just going to zero inbox this as well. Trying to write a simple compass script for a clue. And I'm using display shapes. Just move the center of the object. Just want to update one end of the line. So this is a case where like other people look at the forums and I don't know it off the top of my head. And I know that other people can figure it out too. So I'm actually going to leave this alone and let somebody else handle it because I don't like it's, me doing support is like this weird thing of like it's probably not the best use of my time um, so in this case I think I'm gonna just if you're watching I'm sorry but I would have I would have to spend like tw tw like 15 20 minutes figuring out like how to do this um, so I'm just gonna I'm just gonna move on The reason that Linux is a thing at all is because of free software. Mm -hmm. It is interesting that the working in public book, though, talks about the different models for open source software, um, which is really, really interesting. Like, is it a lot of people that are like all sharing the same thing or is it like a few people where a lot of people use it? Um, I've talked about this before in like the posts that I've done um, at the start of the year, but like we're kind of shooting for this model, like a lot of people and it like bringing more people in. Um, which is kind of the model that people assume for open source projects, but it's not always the, the case. So here's a thing about um, QDPI NeoPixel and the beta zero, which I've already applied to. Uh, it didn't work. And Todd says, hey, thanks for the beta one release. Uh, you're welcome, Todd. Um, the main issue that, that this was uh, pertaining to is has been fixed. Okay, this says, I'm trying to balance a few requirements to pick the best CircuitPython MCU. Looking for suggestions for my short list of Itzy M0, M4, NRF, and QtPy. Battery powered to low current draw is important. Small size and low heat are important. RF will be on another module. 5 GPIO. Ability withstand 100 degrees centigrade environment. Mm. Yeah, so it's the it's this ability to withstand 100 degrees C environment that makes me think I'm not qualified to answer it. <laughs> like I don't know. Like if I were to if I were to go through here, I would say like Cutie Pie no, it's EM zero no, just because they have not a lot of RAM, but I don't know what they're actually doing. Um. So it's a hard question. There's other people that can answer it, so I'm not going to do it. <laughs> this makes me think, of, like, I just read the, I read the forum and don't reply. But yeah. See? There are other people, like Dave, that can get back to people. So they got it working, so that's all good. Oh, 100 degrees C, that's true. That's boiling point. That's crazy. Yeah. 
Yeah, I don't. I don't need to do it. Okay, sound driven LCD module. Nobody's replied. Uh, da -da -da -da. Show a sound wave forum on an LCD screen. So one thing I'm also thinking about when I'm doing this forum support is thinking about um, whether I know of a project that is related. So like one way to answer this is that um, like, oh, take a look at this or that. Um, But again, I like, I think, like, I don't actually do a lot of project stuff. <laughs> so I think, uh, again, somebody else is probably a better person to answer than me. Let's see, like, so we actually, like, uh, Adafruit pays people to do forum support. Um, so yeah. And pro tip, if you're waiting for them to reply to you, the people who get paid to do the forum, I think, tend to look for posts that have no replies. So, like, if I kind of don't reply that well, but I reply at all, like, that could actually m make it fall off somebody's radar. Um, okay. Uh, da -da -da -da. And they, somebody replied. I don't even need to think about it. And Brent replied here, so I'm going to assume Brent's going to follow up. Issue with the Apple Media Service Library. So this is the library I wrote or had a hard in, uh, part in. So I should probably read it more carefully. But it bombs when I play a Blue Oyster Cult song. I get this runtime error packet too short. Oh, interesting. I figured out that it's because the blue oyster cult with the umlaut above the O. If I modify the code to not display the artist, it works fine. So it must be the umlaut. If I print the artist name to the bottom of the editor while it's running, I get this. It's incorrect. I'm new to this, so I'm wondering if there's an easy fix for this apart from checking that the name and changing it to a regular O. Interesting. So there's a couple ways I can answer this. Um, I think probably what I'll do is I'll direct them. Like, this is very clearly a bug, right? Like, this is a problem with the library. It's not handling this correctly. Um, yeah, oops, not UTF-8 compliant. Exactly. So this is not... Um, this is not the place we expect to have it. So um, what I'm going to ask them to do is file an issue on the library um, because it's a bug that we need to fix. And then I will get an email about it and then we'll go from there. Um, <laughs> yeah. Mark says text is so easy. Yeah, right. Um, okay. So uh, let's just do that. And Apple... This library issues picking new app tracks. So this looks really similar, right? Um, which we haven't figured out. <laughs> so, okay, let's say, let's link them to this. Nice job. Figuring out what the bug was. Would you mind filing an issue here? That way we can track when it gets fixed. Yeah, interesting. It's like clearly some like length issue. And I like to say thanks. And we'll submit. If 
Finally, they fixed the text encoding issue in the terminal and Mew editor by taking my commit and changing it with their code. Not so friendly. Unexpected Maker says, so how long does it take you on average to do all this every morning? Uh, Mondays are bad. Mondays I also don't do it in the morning because I'm doing all weekend. But it's maybe two hours on average, I would say. Like, you know, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday morning, I can probably do it pretty quickly. Um... David says, you could have copy and pasted the message and create the issue yourself. True, but then I wouldn't have taught or, or leveled up this person into making an issue. And if I made the issue, I mean, I could make the issue. But, like, that takes more time. <laughs> but, yeah, I would say a couple hours, Unexpected Maker. Because I also do internal emails and Discord. So it's generally like up to lunch. So I usually get to my desk about 10 and I'm Hello. doing like 10 to, 10 to noon, 10 to 1 o'clock uh, in the afternoon that I'm doing all this. Um, I can't do everything. It's a pretty big commitment every day. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. But seeing folks stick around and... Yeah, I don't know. I don't know who they were saying hello to me. Maybe. Maybe me. Um, seeing folks stick around and help out is just like... And, and kind of what I was saying with the release notes earlier, like, it's rewarding for me to see all those people participate and... Like, ultimately, ultimately, we're going to get more, we're going to move faster with CircuitPython if we have a lot of people contributing, right? So, like, it's a, it's a tax on me, it's a tax on my hours, but it comes back fourfold, right? Um, <laughs> Picorinary says, we have faith in your ability to do everything, there's just not enough time. Yeah, I can't do it all myself. I could probably do it, I just, like... It takes everything takes time. Um, right, so this says my cutie pie arrived yesterday. As far, best I can tell, the cutie pie CircuitPython 6.0 beta doesn't have support for display AO. I also don't see it in the bundle. Um, trying to get an OLED LCD working. <sighs> That's a bummer. What boards have display I.O.? Most of the M0s do not. Like, Trinket doesn't. But Trinket also doesn't have Spy Flash. Whereas the Cutie Pie does. Like, sh do we expect it to have display I.O.? Oh, no, we don't. Right, so... This is what I can say is that by default it doesn't have spy flash, which means we can't fit display IO, but if they do this, then we do have it. Lamor did the OLED with a cutie pie and ask an engineer, so it should work. But she had the spy flash on the back, right? So I think that's what I have to let them know. Hi Andre. Fortunately, the build of CircuitPython for the regular cutie pie without flash does not have does not have space for display I/O. need to add flash chip to the back and then use the hack express version I'm doing good All right. 
Yeah, I mean, that's kind of unfortunate, right? That, like, she showed it off as, as that working. Um... You could also hack the build of CircuitPython to remove other things and enable. We're doing email, kind of. So we went through my email, all, got all of the different emails I got from GitHub and opened them up all in these tabs. And we're going through and basically doing all the support um, forum work and uh, GitHub work that I do every every morning, uh, every weekday morning, and enable display I/O. Build instructions are here. Do, do, do. Okay, that's nice. Thank you. Uh, build instructions are. I think it's just building circuit Python. Oh. Here. Yeah, Tabot's pointing out, doesn't is Adafruit SSD thirteen oh six in similar libraries not need display IO? Yes, there's also frame buffer stuff. Um that could work as well. You should reply. <laughs> But since they mentioned display AO directly, then I'm trying to get an OLED LCD working. Yeah, I wish we could fit everything. I'm like really hot on these uh, STM chips. It's STM 32G4. Actually, I need to email a little more about this. But it's it. I have not found a court. Uh, so let me pull up a picture of a trinket. Uh, Circuit Python downloads trinket. So this package here uh, is a 32 QFN, and I haven't found a Cortex M4 chip that is a 32 QFN, except um, this STM 32G4. If we look uh, not here but in their access line, um, they. The lowest end of their access line here is a 32-pin QFN. Um, and so my hope is that we can use these. So CircuitPython needs basically 256K flash and at least 32K memory. Um, but I think... So these... Oh, these three SKUs that are marked as coming in Q1 2021 uh, could m unlock... M4s and like basically Trinket M4, Gemma M4, Cutie Pie M4, whatever. Like, I think this is that this fits that bill. Um, so yeah, I I mean to email Lamore and be like, hey, talk, reach out to ST and see if we can't get in on the ground floor with these. Um, da, 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 da. Nice. So yeah, uh, I forgot how I got there. But yeah, I want to get... <laughs> Sorry. my Just put my hand in a bunch of water from the ice in my glass. Okay, where were we? But yeah, we're talking. While I, while I do my email. Okay, and top out, you can reply to them if you want to point that out. I'm not perfect. Um, I might actually leave this tattoo... I'm going to move this down to my other email. I need to email a little more about that. Get that. Get that rolling. Um, okay, we're done with forum. Let me just refresh just to, to see. Uh, but yeah, we're done. Let's close it. Okay. Um, new to the entire CircuitPython library, I was following an online example with the whiskey server stuff, and it says I cannot import parse headers. So let's um, see what they're doing. I think they said that it has to do with requests, which I changed. Um, so if we do ES ESP32 spy, whiskey server. <laughs> Tombot says, yeah, very exciting for the G4. Um, 
so we can see here it's doing from a different request import parse headers. Now I'm a stickler. Most of you know that I'm a stickler for um, not adding APIs that don't exist. So the first thing we need to do is we need to go to requests um, Python. So let's take it the the real requests. <laughs> Bruce says, I was just looking at some of the G4 line. Nice. So the question is, is does requests have parse headers? Parse headers. No, it doesn't. OK, so this was a shortcut that was taken originally. And now it. Uh, Unfortunately, it won't work. So I'm not going to fix it now. But I think what my suggestion would be is that we basically copy it. Because it's not a lot of code. If we go in, like, it still exists. It's just not public anymore. Um, so if we look... Uh, I thought I had left it in here. Yeah, so it's here. Oops, I think I broke this. Parse headers is not actually part of the request API we'll need to pull the implementation into this library this library code is here you haven't missed the stream We've got lots of tabs open still. Um, we were just talking about moving the this part of the library out separate as well, because there's no reason it should actually be tied to the ESP32 spy class. It should be something we can use more generically, like with the S2's native Wi-Fi as well. Um, and I, I don't want to do this immediately, so I'm actually going to say, like, do you want to try to do this? And do that. Can get quicker help uh, guidance on it on our Discord. <laughs> All right. So this is me like I don't want to do it now because it could take a while, but I can like try to level them up by giving them hopefully a little bit of a direction on where to go and how to get some more help. And these other two I can close. Okay, so this is from Kevin. That says, I got water on my desk. It's throwing me off. This library can end up throwing a zero division error. Um, probably occurring because of this. It's confusing. Because prescale register. Da -da 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 -da. Users who have bumped into it. I want to try this issue. I have a draft solution here, but I need a few clarifications. So how did they... Oh, they just caught it. Um, but where does prescale register come from? So it's actually a register that gets read. But it's set here. Uh, 
Um, interesting. Hi, me six. Bruce says, now I'm looking for a board, defi board definition I did. Turns out it's on a branch. Yeah. Flash memory at PS RAM specifically. It's a how, how to email today. Yeah, it is. Okay, so I think, um, should I print the error instead of returning it? So this is a problem in the way that it's failing. That's a good question. Yeah, Mark, I know there I know there are existing chips, but they're not the um not the small ones, right? They're not the small ones, or they're not the ones with the flash in memory. Right? Let's see. Let's look at this. I think we're doing more and more lower power stuff. I know Lamore actually wants to do some ESP32. They are? Oh, they're L4s. Ah. I see. And they have 32 QFN. And they're Cortex M4s with USB. One on the dev board. Yeah, that's fair. Let's take a look at this. Sorry. You know that this is kind of my jam. I get distracted. <laughs> yes, yes, and yes. Um, okay. Are they... I wonder what cost they have. 80 megahertz M4, so it would still be more than the 48 the Sandy 21 has. And... I don't see USB in this connected connectivity thing. Right? USB, USB, USB. Let's say here. Uh, USB to OTG it is only on the high end of the line. Four thirty two. Oh, but it does have USB device, not OTG. Uh, uh, where did, what? I don't want that. Uh, sometimes the USB is not on the smallest packages. 432. 256.64. That would be reasonable. Yeah, we'll have to take a look at that. The G4s are more RAM, so it might actually be worth the wait. But yeah, thanks for pointing me to that. I will drag that down to my other <laughs> queue of stuff. Okay, I, I did mean to take time codes through this, but I'm sorry. I'd, I'm not, <laughs> not doing it. Yeah, I see that has USB device. I see that. Um, okay, let's get, like, I still have lots of tabs here, so let's get through that. Should I print the error instead of returning? Um, and how do I test it? Mm, are they returning it or raising it? I should raise it. you have any hardware you could test with? Mm. 
Um, and ideally, we'd raise the exception that happens indicates uh, an I squared C error. It looks like this is only happening on Raspberry Pi. So it's possible that like the Raspberry Pi is not raising an error correctly. Maybe an issue in the lower level. Okay. okay. Done. Ah, so this was closed. Oh, it was closed. Okay. Done with that. Inconsistent heap. I think I asked Jeff to review this, so I don't actually have to get back to it. Found a small improvement. But there is a matching hole on the other side. We use the hole instead of giving up. Okay. Thumbs up. Uh, thumbs up this one too. And I think it's waiting for Jeff, so I'm gonna, I'm just gonna re-request review. Okay. Papers over a problem we call bust free when free is a null pointer. In the case of sharp delay, remove the null check. All right, so it's marked as bug fix. I think we could also label it bug and display IO. <laughs> Me6 says, has the SH 1107 branch been merged? Yes, it was merged and it was included in beta one. So yeah, it's in. And thanks to Mark again for doing that. Uh, Mark Roberts, I assume. Would something like USB IP be, could be used to emulate the missing USB port over Wi-Fi? Not sure what you mean. Folknology says I've used the L433 a lot. <laughs> Me6 says amazing. Nice. Okay. Yeah, I mean the 256K version of Flash is like really not that that happy. So this is a Sion's bug. This says it um, double start of code.py with beta one when powering the board from USB. It doesn't happen in beta zero with the same code. Um, somebody else was, I think Todd was actually saying that um, he was seeing issues with uh, like restarts being really slow. So I think, I think it's worth like just taking a gl glance at it like this bug is not show stopping like you can edit and do everything but like it would be nice to just take a look at this so let's just do bug usb supervisor um we'll take a look at it to see if it's as expected. Like we updated tiny USB between beta zero and beta one, so that might be a reason as well. But it's not a showstopper for sure. Um, okay, matrix portal crashes into safe mode. Um, and it's marked at MLSAMD bug display IO, which is great. Um, and I actually also, we have a crash label that I want to put it on there too. That's just another way of saying like, this is a high priority. Um, <laughs> unexpected maker says my in inbox just went ping. You might want to filter those emails for me off so you don't get pinged by me. You also know, uh, if you're in the circuit Python discord channel, like when I'm in this mode, you'll see just like lots of stuff hit there. Cause, cause it gets updated with issues. Um, so they reproduced it and it looks like Jeff has a pull request for it. So I'm just going to 
close. This is the same issue again, so I'm going to close that. Um, okay, so this is, I think, you know, I think I have Jeff's issue open. Yeah, this is the corresponding, whoa, 161 failing tests. Um, why did he... All right, let's see. RGB has no bus and no bus-free method. It's always possible to refresh the display. Okay. Not bus or bus-free. Okay. But the build's not liking that. So here's the results. Everything failed. Let's hit details and see what was the problem. So it looks like it failed in setup. Um, so this is not due to Jeff. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to just rerun all jobs. And it says there was a problem, which is unfortunate. Maybe, is it down? 425 for 250 pieces. Yeah, I'm going to email Lamore about it, and then she'll email ST. I'll, I'll put both of those in there. <laughs> I don't know if Jeff will watch it. Jeff does a lot of stuff like this too, so he's he probably understands that. All right, it does look like it restarted. So I think what I'm, the other option I have is actually just leaving the tab open. Since I've been going right to left, I'm going to move it over here. <laughs> Anna Yet says, I have no idea what you're doing, but it looks fun. Yeah, I'm going through all of the code reviews that I need to do for today before the weekend. Okay. So I've been receiving some reports that the gamepad library and the Pew library don't work reliably on the SAMD21. Yep. Letting everyone know that's a potential problem. Very uneven way, which results in flickering. Okay, so this is like... I was thinking about this earlier. And... Basically, we're in this mode of, like, about to go stable. And so anything that's, like, this might be a, a like, broad issue. We need to, like, raise it up. Uh, it is part of my job. Yeah, I am paid by Adafruit to work on open source software, particularly CircuitPython. So all these code reviews I'm doing are related to that project. Um, and I'm going to set the milestone to 6.0. Uh, basically, anything that's marked 6.0 is going to prevent us from going stable. And you'll you'll notice if you've been following along, I basically like it, it's either six zero, which means we don't want to release stable until it's fixed, or six xx, uh, which is like bug fixes and like all the ESP stuff. I've actually been putting in the six xx bucket because I don't want to like that port itself is not stable yet, so I'm okay releasing a stable release before ESP thirty two is stable. Um, Uh, and it was discussed in Discord. Yep. Yeah, so, like, we can run... If a CPU... If a microcontroller allows us to do, like, execute in place off of a QSPY flash, we could do that. It's kind of slow, though. Um, generally, it's either... If there's some flash, I, I think that would be kind of weird. Um... Caused by changes in interrupt priorities. The frequency is much lower and much more uneven. Ah, okay. So let's read more of this. Looks like the timer is getting triggered in a very uneven way. Uh, it still looks to be more regular than it should. 
first row is with 5, 3. Um, I'm wondering what the changes that Dishipu made are for this. Yeah, you can ask questions. Um, uh, is the pulse width how long is it current? Um, you have to fake the once a second. So our math could be When did I start coding? I started in 2002 doing what I consider like logic coding. I did HTML before that, which would have been, I would have been 16. Um, I think I did my math right. Um, and I'm not even doing coding. I think that's part of why this stream is important is that there's lots more to coding than coding itself. I was doing that earlier because I wasn't doing email, but yeah, there's more to more to software engineering than actual than just coding. Um, I want to point to the spot that it's done. So ports at mill sam d supervisor port. Hi Greg, thanks for joining us. I need to get back into FPGA land. I got two Oshpark boards that came back from Fab today. Nice. P. Curry and Hurry picked Python up in 2001, 2002 as well. I didn't do Python for a year or two at that point, I think. I, the first thing I learned was actually PHP. Um, so enable tick is what I'm talking about so that's what I'm thinking yeah the Sandy 21 doesn't have like a wave to tell the RTC that does your Oshpark boards have the new debug edge yes I think well one of the boards I made is just uh, eight LEDs that I can breadboard and then the other one is the one with the debug edge on it um, okay so this is what I want to link around a mirror too Okay, so that's my contribution to that. Implement SCM405. So this is going to be a while. This is a big review, and I'll do it on the stream, even though we're about to our two hours. Nice. Me6 says that SH1107 is working. Awesome. How oh, exciting. FPGAs are fun because you can do anything. Also, FPGAs are difficult because you can do anything. Yes. Have you heard about what I'm going for with it? Have I made the pitch to you? with my like mock XO2 stemma one. Um, okay. So what I'm gonna do is because this is gonna take some focus for the review, it's like 13 files change. I'm actually gonna wait on that just a smidge. Please show them. I wanna know how the MCU and Spidey icons look. Uh, yeah, I don't have the boards yet, so yeah. I'm 17 and wanna get a computer science degree eventually, which language will you suggest? Um, Python's a great language to learn to begin with. Um, so I, Python's my bias as well. Um, take a look at that. But the re I think finding a way for you to practice, whether it's like projects that you're excited about or a site that has projects, uh, can be really good. For Python, I think there's this thing called Python Bytes, B-I-T-S-T-E-S. I thought it was, I don't know. I'm sure there's a way to do like lots of practice programming for Python. Um, so I would like practice is really important. And so figuring out how, uh, yeah, the, the boards are back from fab. They're not here yet. I'll show them next week. Just remind me. 
Um, okay. Let's do the easier reviews first. This one's already approved. Smoke tested, says it's good. Change around cystic and sleep modes have broken it. Um, have a separate issue. That's great. Check the files change. Basically, I'm only looking to make sure that like nothing was accidentally included. I will approve as well. Uh, I made the issue blocking the next staple release. So we'll figure it out. <laughs> okay, and then I'll just hit merge. Wabam. I probably should have done the translation one. The translation thing, like the moment that you commit something new, it usually redoes the PR, which is kind of annoying. All right. Uh, Melissa is unhiding unexpected makers thing. So we just go in here. This is for circuitpython.org and just says uh, delete the thing that makes it not display. And we'll say approve and thank you. Submit. And we'll merge it as well. Our timing's not too bad on this. We're, we're getting down there. Um, added Metro, all this, plus the conversation, but it's already merged, so I don't need to do anything here. That's just context. Um, this is thing from higher effect. Requested a review from Jeff yesterday. It's also not passing all the tests, or it's not building. Um, and microdev's been helpful on that as well. So I don't need to contribute. <laughs> I could take myself off the review, actually. Actually, I might do that. As a, as a way to, like, like, if Jeff's on there and has replied, I'll just let Jeff do it. <laughs> I've got plenty to do. Okay, so let's keep... Okay, so that's going to take a while. This is going to take a while. Um, this is going to take a while. Add a font file. Melissa approved. Let's just merge that. And then I think I'll actually, I'll take time codes for these last few. Um, okay, so let's do this one because I think this one might be the most interesting. This is adding STM support to CanIO. So before I start talking about it, let's do a time code 15708. We're in the heart of pull requests. Okay, so we've talked about um, the way that CircuitPython is structured and that shared bindings is uh, the boundary between Python and C and the way that you um, Ah, the STM32L432 has can support as well. Yeah, I'll I'll email. I'm, I'll do that after the stream. I'll email more with that with both of those. Um, okay, so this is a new. Um, it's not a new API. It's just a new implementation. Um, I could ask uh, Higher Effect to do it, but I did the review for the original can. Um, so I'll just do it myself. And let's take a look at it. So um, this should be pretty straightforward because uh, <laughs> this is funny. So it looks like Jeff made the same mistake. He didn't update. So this is exactly <laughs> this is perfect. Um, this is exactly the problem with uh, the submodule stuff that we did at the start of the stream is that if you don't do the git submodule update and then you add it to your thing, you could accidentally include it. Um, so I'll have to remember to tell him that of like, I don't think you should be changing tiny USB. Um, and then let's just do quick. I think I've done reviews on the stream before, but let, let's keep rolling on this. Um, okay. So here we can see on the make file, we add if can is it, can is enabled, we add the HAL stuff. So let's just say that looks good. Enable it for the feather. 
I wonder if we want to enable it for all the M4s. Probably. So, like, generally, we don't want one... Like, there's r rare cases where you only need one board to support it. Um, so, I'm going to leave that un unchecked. And I'll go back to that. So, um... Pardon me for asking this, but do you really have big degrees or just self-learning? I was self-taught. Um, it's very helpful. Um, and, but I do have a degree in computer engineering, like a bachelor's degree. Um, it helps get that first job. But after that, it doesn't matter. It, it gives you a, a, a like... Uh, it, it exposes you to some other stuff that you don't necessarily hit when you're self-taught. So I think it's valuable, but um, it's not required. Or, like, it's not going to teach you everything. You're, there's still lots to learn and practice on, in addition to that. Okay, so what we're going to see here is uh, because the API is existing, all the files that... Uh, Jeff should have changed. It's just all these port specific STM ones. So we can see here that uh, these files, so I'm at the bottom. <laughs> Mark, I don't know. I mean, I think you have to get status and then get at it um, in this case, but maybe there's some other process that's weird. Um, it's just, it tends to be just like when you're merging and it gets updated. Um, but it, the the commit that it should be at gets updated, but the copy locally to you does not get updated. You have to do the separate submodule update. But clearly Jeff's, Jeff's hitting it too. Um, okay, so this is picking out the pins that match, and I'm just going to assume those are correct. Um, enabling it at HAL... Empty header, empty implementation, which is fine. The, I'm okay with these empty files because they they have corresponding files in shared bindings. So I like that kind of like there's always just this like cor correlation between it. Um, so this is the object. This looks okay. These... Uh, these you shouldn't need. These are... Oh, receive into you might. Get timeout, set timeout. Hmm. Are these different? And the methods used, functions used by shared bindings. I don't usually prefix them with common how in that case. So that they are distinct. So I'm going to start a review because I'm going to have more comments. Um, school is forcing us to learn C along with HTML, but I like Python as it's more simple. Any good tutorial sources? There's lots if you just search. Like, I, I learned from a... I learned PHP from a book. Um, but... C is you're gonna learn more concepts with C than you will with Python, but you'll you'll get further faster with Python. Okay, so this looks okay. Besides that, Jeff likes to do these pragma onces, which is totally fine. Um, and this is where I admit that I'm not that thorough with reviewing like this custom code. Like you're more likely to find. Errors with testing, I think. Not my strong suit. So I'm just scanning over it, looking for anything that looks suspicious to me, which is super vague and something that, like, 
it's kind of just experience, I guess. This is switching between the FIFOs. Like, I'm much more picky about API design than I am about... Um, yeah, I wouldn't do PHP now either. But at the time, it was... I was coming from the HTML world, so PHP was made sense. Python's much better. Mm -mm -mm. Some people would be nitpicky about this, like there's no space here. But really, that doesn't make you a better reviewer. Uh, because a computer could do that. Like, if we cared about exact, like, spacing and stuff, we can just run a script over here to reformat everything, which we should do at some point, which we will do at some point. Um, but so I find some reviewers do that, of, like, put spaces here and do that sort of thing, and generally I try not to do that because that's not very helpful. The things that I'm really looking out for are, like, what I think are logic errors, or like the comments might actually have questions or be incomplete. Um, and the one formatting thing that bothers me is if you do an if statement without the curly braces and just put one thing in it, um, that is prone to errors, uh, like coding errors going forward. So that's the one style thing that I, I would, would like uh, comment on. Otherwise, I'm just kind of skimming this, honestly, and um, if there are bugs, we'll find them when we use it, and we will fix them. But I'm, I'm a much more detail-oriented person when it comes to like the design of an API, because that's something you can't change, uh, not change easily. And for a PR like this, where it's just another implementation, like the API to Python is, is the same. And that's the benefit of the shared bindings thing is like n none of this is Python API. So reset, dnet, silent. I thought we didn't check these anymore. <laughs> Picori in her haste says, I have so many style opinions. Yeah, I think I think you need to ideally get past style. Like find a formatter you like and just stick with it. And like MicroPython actually picked a C formatter. And so I think we'll be hard pressed to go a different route than that. Um, we'll probably just use it as well. Okay, so we're through it. Um, and I'll, I have a few comments. Generally, like, trying to minimize per board stuff. Um... Few comments, questions, but nothing major. Please fix up. I have ten ESP as well. I don't know what Jeff's process is for that. I guess I could have said thanks. Oops. We can see there's only one commit. And I don't know what it's based on. Bruce asks, has anyone used Dart? Or is that Google only? I guess Flutter users are Dart users. I know that um, Thea, who does a lot of CircuitPython synth stuff, works for Dart. Or Flutter. Okay. Let's keep going. Let's take a time code. We're over time, but not by that much. 
Why am I using LastPass instead of Bitwarden? I don't know. Because I got it set up and I didn't have a reason to switch. Okay. So, duh, duh, duh. questions. Okay. Quote, reply. The most important thing is that you use a password manager. <laughs> Doesn't matter which one. Just don't use the same password in every website. Does the supervisor allocation containing the USB have to live forever? Or can it be freed after initialization? I think it needs to live forever. Because the host could ask for it at any time. Okay. And I don't need to have this part. So anything with the, the like greater than in front of it will be quote quoted. So if we hit preview, you can see that like, oh, that's not nice preview. Why does it look ugly? Is it because of that? Huh. I would expect it to wrap. Why doesn't it wrap? Does it be? Does it have too much? There we go. That's more. That's what I expect. <laughs> Alvaro says, and don't use two-factor auth based on SMS. All right. Keep going. Two-factor over SMS is be better than no two-factor, I think. How many bytes? Uh, if I had to guess, it's 500 to 1,000. But I don't know off the top of my head. I think I already implied that I'm guessing. We could actually look. Hmm. Primarily asking because I'm an ex LastPass user. Couldn't tolerate the bugs, price, and it being proprietary anymore. Yeah, it's been working fine for me, and I don't mind paying for it. I like paying for things that I use. Okay, what happens when the Pi functions that set of these are called in code.py? Uh. I would just have them fail. Raise an exception. But maybe it'd be okay if USB is unconnected. This is where I want to shrug. This is where you can like start with the like only in boot.py does it work. And then later, if you want to make it smarter, then we can do that. Bruce says, I dropped LastPass when they were sold. Hmm. Yeah, I use, I use Authy for my two-factor. Oops. Looks like I ended up in the quote, so let me edit. And the edit doesn't apply to the email, which is unfortunate. Paying for Bitwarden, but it's Voss. Yeah, I'll take a look. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Next up. Analog in. Oh, that was cool. Scrolled up. 314.29. Okay, so this is another case where um, I liked Authy because it's synced across devices. That's why I switched to it. I, like, I got a new phone, and I was like, I need a solution where I don't have to do this every time I get a new phone. Um, so this is another case where uh, the API is existing, so we should only see changes in the ports directory. Um, so again, it should be pretty straightforward. 
Um, there is some discussion here about um, like getting the maximum range. Which is not my area of expertise. Um, so I won't actually comment on that. Oh, nice. Okay, let's take a look at the review. So this is... Oh, you know what? This is including... All of the... I guess he did it as, yeah. Okay, this will be quick. But um, one thing I asked Lucien to do as well is that I wanted to move off of my version of the IDF. Um, <laughs> so this, the reason this is 49 files is that it includes a lot of changes in order to get the, uh, it's not compiling yet either, but it, it's moving the IDF away from mine to, so it used to be Tanu ESP IDF and now it's Espressif IDF, which is good. So that looks good. We can see that we're adding one pulse out. Why is that there? Because this is an S it's from an STM file. Huh. Maybe he has it in the wrong thing. Okay, this looks good. So this is what we were able to do is using dash I system means that if there's warnings from the headers, it doesn't complain about it. Which is good. And that's that allows like the reason I had to fork of the IDF was to be able to edit it and fix those bugs. So construct pin does not have ADC claim pin get value. Multi sampling number of samples. Cool. That looks fine. Uh, uh, uh. So here you can drag because these say STM32. I'm like, need these still? Okay. So if if the files change, the viewed state uh, changes as well. No DAC on the chip. Implemented. Okay. That's the weird thing about analog analog IOs. If you want to do half of it, you have to end up with this. Like, it looks like you can do analog out when you can't. Okay. This is where it gets easy. And just all the updates. Update, update, update. Like, I'm not worried about these changing because like the compiler can make sure you have all the right headers and that the paths are good. So like if the CI passes and it compiles them all, like there's no reason to be concerned. Although we probably shouldn't update the IDF too much more before we go stable because it could change stability. So here's the idea the actual IDF change. MP config port, white space stuff. Needs this undefined, but uses it everywhere. Shouldn't the dash I system take care of this? Hmm. 
<laughs> Perks up at ESP IDF. Yeah, uh, Lucian wanted to update it because uh, the analog stuff got better. Mm. So here, instead of com commenting it out, he should just delete it because it will be on de by default otherwise. So just do that as a suggestion. Good. Pins. ADC unit. Okay, that looks good. So this is keeping track of like what ADC index and channel everything is. Okay, that's good. It's just fixing headers. It's tedious work. No? Perks down at ESP IDF. <laughs> Lots of people like the ESP. We already talked to STM. All right, so we got through all but this file from a separate change. Okay, so that's good. Market is viewed. We've got six comments, and we're going to request changes. Thanks for switching all those headers. Just a couple other comments. A few questions. I guess it might be nice if they all wrote to a common how. What do you mean by they all? We're doing it. <laughs> Okay. This build's going. It's waiting, though. I'll do this later. We don't have to do this now. Let's finish up with this. And then we'll call it semi manufacturers. Yeah. It would. I think Arm really tried to do that with Simsys. And, like, that's also, like, if you look at, like, Zephyr Project, like, they're doing similar things as well. But, like, because CircuitPython is so dynamic that, like, a lot of the HALs don't work for us. Uh, but I think the reverse would be not true. Okay, let's do the last one here. And, like, I'm just over two hours and I've been talking. Like, if I was doing this without talking, I'd be quicker at it quicker at. Okay. This is not a code review. This is getting back to uh, So what are you going to do after? Like after doing the email and the tab and the tabs? So that's usually lunch time and exercise time and then you know the reason I do that is to get my plate cleared so after I do lunch and exercise it's usually like trying to get some focused work and most of the work I've been doing this week is the IMX stuff and the release so like last if you look at my uh, not today but I mean it's Friday I might poke at the IMX a bit more um, yeah Hal is hard hardware abstraction layer Thanks, Alvaro. Okay, I'm going to reply to Sedacious here, and then we're going to call it. And Well, I, I'll answer questions still. I don't have a hard stop. Spy uses the bit within the first byte sent to designate the bytes will be read or written by the host. As far as I know, it's up to the manufacturer to decide if a high level designates a read or write. Here's the relevant section. Right. Right. I'm suggesting the polarity of this should be able to be set in with a default here. Tell the sensor automatically increment the register address for successive reads. 
Uh, see, this is trying to provide a, a spy level bus. Right. Okay. Register factory object that is used and create the individual bits. Spy support in register so that any input would help us make a choice. Here's a graphic that explains clock polarity. Yep. 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 Okay. So. I think that. Hmm. Okay. Is to have it as part of the register construct register real destructor. <laughs> Think midnight snack. H A L. Hungry as the lion. Quit the stream and go eat something. Yeah, sorry we went long. We're almost done. Fields constructor. Then it can change the top bit or two as needed. In the longer term, it'd be interesting to unify the the bus API, so we don't need to. Versions of the same for each fields, so that device with registers over I squared C and spy or spy. Hopefully that's helpful. Okay, <laughs> my eyes are gone focusing on the laptop and TV. Um, Harold asks, do you see Titano as a product with legs, aka a strong future, or should I wait for the metros you mentioned? Um, Titano, like Pi Portal Titano? Is that what you're talking about? I mean, the Pi Portal, like... The Pi Portal Titano has a SAMD51, which is well supported and is not, I don't think it's going to run up against constraints too quickly. Um, and the ESP32 Spy on the side, I would expect us to continue to support um, because there's a lot out there. So I think, um, I don't think you need to wait. I think that um, we may see less of this coprocessor thing in the longer term, but I think we're going to support it for a while. So I, I wouldn't worry. I think the M0s are the ones that I would say, like, any M0 where your RAM is 32K RAM is like, you're just not having a great experience. Um yeah, CircuitPython will continue to support SAMD51s and SAMD21s. Kind of like our support model, I think, is that um, 
as we add stuff, it may be, may not get added to the original, to the smaller chips, but um, what the chips can do now, we'd like to keep them doing that. Um, that's why display AOs in this weird spot where like, we were really targeting the M4s, but there was the one Halloween M0 uh, that was the reason that we even brought it to the SAMD21. But basically, like, new stuff that we add may not be added back, but the 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 SAMD51 is not at that point yet. We're still, we still have room to add stuff. Um, yeah, and the SAMD51 is, like, a like that support is a few years old, so um, it will be stable as well. Um, so yeah, I think it's a good start. The only thing I would, the, the things I would, like the SAMD 20 ones, I would be like, maybe not. But then again, like we just released the QD Pi and it's great for being small and, and stuff. Uh, <laughs> yeah, okay. Uh, you're welcome, Harold. Thanks for, thanks for joining the stream. Um, let's wrap up. It's been two and a half hours, uh, which is about as long as I've gone. I don't know what my record is. Um, let me, I'll, I'll take a time code. Uh, 231.40. So thank you all. Um, I'm Scott. I work for Adafruit. Um, Adafruit is an open source hardware and software company. So like, because they're open source, I was able to actually pull up my email, <laughs> uh, which is a little bit weird, uh, given that I was, uh, given that I was, uh, at a company where like your email was definitely not something you wanted to show people. So, uh, being open source is really, really awesome. Um, they can only do it because lots of folks like to buy their hardware. You can go to adafruit.com and support myself and Adafruit by purchasing from them. Um, Pi Portal Titano is a great example of a product that is really cool um, and a great place to start. Um, these streams happen every week, usually on Fridays at 2 p.m. Pacific. Um, they go about this length, two, two and a half hours, and I take questions and we talk about CircuitPython-y things. Um, and next week is not on Friday. Next week is on Thursday, so heads up. Um, <laughs> Thank you, Anecdata. Anecdata says the longest is over three hours, so I'm well under my longest one. Um, yeah, so please support Adafruit. Uh, if you want to hang out with us uh, in the chat or when the stream is not live, uh, Adafruit has a Discord server, which is uh, adafru.it slash Discord. Lots and lots of cool stuff, um, cool folks that hang out there. Um, and lots of our CircuitPython development discussion happens there as well. So if you like being able to keep track of everything, that's a great place. Uh, P. Curry in a hurry says, also, the Discord is lovely. Um, and Me6 is excited for the Ospark boards next week. Yeah, they should be able to get here. They're just coming from Portland. Um, so I should get those. I, I could look. Um, I don't know if they shipped out yet. But next week, should be able to do that. Um, and if you have suggestions, uh, I'd I'm happy to take su suggestions about what you'd like to s see discussed on the stream. Um, the submodule thing earlier was my attempt at, at satisfying or, or answering Mark's question, Mark Roberts's question about it, but, uh, not sure we figured that out, but we'll, we'll work on it on the discord. Um, so yeah, next Thursday, we'll see you. And, uh, if you're just tuning in for the first time, there's a number of previous deep dives that are just as long, uh, and hopefully interesting. So check those out as well on the Adafruit YouTube, which is, uh, youtube.com slash Adafruit. And uh, let me check my notes. But I think that's it. Um, so thank you all. I'll see you uh, next week. I guess I could go to the cat cam. Spook is grooming himself. So I'll uh, see you all next week. And I'll go pet the cat to, to kind of like play us out. All right, have a great week, weekend, week.